Good morning, geometry students. I hope you're all well. I did want to just start off by saying I did get somebody's prayer request uh, this morning that was sent late last night, and I'm praying, just so you know. Um, God's got you. All right? All right. I love all of you, and I miss you so much, and it looks like we're going to be doing this for the rest of the school year. So what we're going to do is we're going to go forward. Please watch every bit of this. It's got a lot of things in it that are really, really, really hard to do if you don't take my advice and write down the, the methods that I'm going to show you today. So please, please, please make sure that you pay very close attention here. Okay, so here we go. Um, we have this idea of similarity of triangles. We've talked about similar figures and we're going to talk a little bit more. We're going to talk about specifically in right triangles, specifically when you have a right triangle that has an altitude that comes from the intersection of the legs. Okay, so the other altitudes on a right triangle are the ones that are along the legs of the right triangle. They're not necessarily that interesting. But this altitude right here divides the triangle up into two more triangles that are both similar to the original big triangle. Okay, I'll say that again. This altitude divides this triangle up so that you have the big triangle and that gives you two small triangles. The two small triangles are similar to each other and they're similar to the original big triangle. And what that means is that there's a whole bunch of proportions that can be used and that's what our lesson is on today is how we can use those proportions in order to find some interesting information. So here this is written out as a similarity statement triangle ABC, that's our original big one, okay, triangle ABC is similar to this little triangle ADB. Notice that here I have the right angle in the middle, okay, and the longer pointy side on the one, okay, so triangle ADB which is con which is similar to B, D, C. Once again, the right angles are all the matching pieces there in the middle, and we're going along the legs from the longer leg to the shorter leg. Now, if they're exactly the same length, there's not really a point in making a distinction between the longer leg and the shorter leg, but since we have the lo a longer one and a shorter one in most cases. You're going to think about it in that way when you're thinking about the, the pieces and the parts. Now the reason why this is important is because some of the, the segments here are what we call geometric means of other segments. Wait a minute, that's a new term. Yes, it is. Write it down. This part, brand new. You're not going to guess what a geometric mean is. Okay, we've heard the word mean before. Usually the when you hear the word mean, they're usually talking about something called an ar arithmetic mean. And an arithmetic mean is nothing more than an average. A geometric mean is something all completely different. So this is brand new. This is not add the numbers and divide by number of numbers. A geometric mean is the x in this particular proportion. We see the word means here. Remember when we had the product of the means equals the product of the extremes for a cross multiplication and that was our our actual word and I said that word mean would come back? Well if you wrote this out in proportion form these two would be the ones that are next to each other. These are the means. These are the extremes. The geometric mean is what you have when these two numbers or variables are the same thing. So if you're asked to find the to find the geometric mean of two numbers, okay, to find the geometric mean, that means that you put your variable 
that matches in these two spots and the other two numbers go in the other two spots like this. Okay, x is the geometric mean of 3 and 12. Now we can cross multiply. 3 times 12 is 36. So since 36 equals a number times itself, the easiest thing to have happen is when it is a perfect square because the square root of 36 is just 6. And sometimes that happens. So the first thing you do if you're trying to find a geometric mean, set up the problem. And then if you have one that solves easily, you're done, but make sure that you simplify it. Sometimes it's a little more complicated. Find the geometric mean. The directions are the same, so we still put x's in these two spots and the other two numbers in the other two spots. But when we multiply 7 and 14, we get 98. That's not a perfect square. So in order to simplify that, we need to take the square root of 98. So we need to factor it because it doesn't come out even. We just multiplied 7 and 14 to get the 98. So the easiest thing is to break it back into it, 7 and 14. 14 then becomes 7 and 2. So we have a pair of 7s. And, oops, there we go. Sorry about that. We have a pair of 7s. And since we have a pair of 7s, which is 49, the square root of 49 turns out to be 7 times the square root of 2. So your answer here, the geometric mean of 7 and 14 is 7 times the square root of 2. All right, well, that's all well and good. We need to be able to do problems also. We need to be able to um, figure out when they ask us that question in words what to do about it. And also be aware that sometimes we're given a geometric mean and that gives us a whole other scenario. Okay. Here in words, find the geometric mean of 3 times the square root of 7 and 12 times the square root of 7. Okay. Well, geometric mean, those are the x's. They go in those spots, and here's this. Now, don't get afraid because you're asked to multiply when you cross-multiply something a little more complicated because I'm going to show you how. When you multiply 3 square root of 7 and 12 square root of 7, the 3 times 12 gives you 36 like you would expect. Square root of 7 times square root of 7, you're allowed to bring both of them underneath the same radical. In Algebra 2, we'll spend more time on radicals, but for now, you're just we're just doing the simple kind. Since it's the same, we can bring it under. We get square root of 49, and the square root of 49 is 7. Now... Notice I haven't gone ahead and multiplied. Remember last time we multiplied but then immediately broke it back up again? I'm just kind of saving us a step here because when I take the square root of both of these sides, okay, and I'm taking the square root of 36 and 7, 36 is already a perfect square, and since it's multiplying, I can just automatically bring out the 6. It's a little shortcut when you have a perfect square that's underneath your radical along with something else it's multiplied by. You don't have to multiply it out, then factor tree it. You can just say, wait, I know that the square root of 36 is 6. I'm going to go ahead and bring that right out. And 7 isn't a perfect square. It doesn't factor down into something that's going to be helpful. Okay, so you can do that. All right, moving right along. Here in the words, it says 3 is the geometric mean. So you're not finding the geometric mean, you're given the geometric mean of 5 and a number. So the number is your variable, 3 is the geometric mean. Remember in these geometric mean problems, the geometric mean goes here 
and here. In this case, though, it isn't an x, it's a 3. There's your geometric mean. The other two, 3 is the geometric mean of 5 and a number. So now this is interesting because when you cross multiply you have an easier problem because this is just 5x equals 9 and then divide both sides by 5 and you get 9 fifths. You can leave it improper if you want. Okay, so you have to be very careful what goes into the geometric mean spaces. It may or may not be a variable. Read your problem carefully. If you are given the geometric mean, it's a number. If you're not given the geometric mean, it's whatever variable belongs there. Okay, this one also, this one has a tricky little twist. And if you pay attention, you're going to get it right. And it's kind of an easy, nice little twist. X plus 2 is the geometric mean. That means X plus 2 has to go in the geometric mean spots in this proportion. Geometric mean of 12 and 27. So I've got 12, I've got 27. I want to cross multiply. Okay, I went ahead and cross multiplied. There was no point keeping it separate right then. You can if you want to, but 12 and 27, neither one of them are perfect squares anyway, so we'll just get 324. I do not want you to go ahead and do x, time, x plus 2 times x plus 2 and multiply that out. I want you to leave it as x plus 2 squared because right from here we can square root both sides to get rid of the square. It's like an inverse operation. This one, if you try the square root of 324, we can either use this calculator which is your preferred one that you absolutely need to have for next year. We get 18 there. For now though, just in case you don't have it for this school year, we have something odd going on with my calculator here. Anyway, if I took 324, it's not even working. That's weird. Hmm. That worked all earlier. Huh. Let me put it back on. Don't you love when technology does great things to for you? One more time, and if not, ah, oh, there we go. 324. And you take the square root of it. It is hiding... should be a square root button on here somewhere. But since we can't find it, you always can look at the second button. Notice that on this calculator we had to do second of x squared to get to the square root. Here it doesn't show it, so you have to keep in mind what was happening with that other cal calculator. Okay. The second button toggles between a few options. So our second, here's your square root button, and we can square root 324 and get 18. So we have x plus 2 equals 18 now. So x has to equal 16. Okay? So be careful with that. Now let's go back to our drawing. I want everybody right now to stop, pause the video, and draw this picture exactly. Okay, if you have access to the notes online, which you do if you go to the geometry page and you click on the notes section, you have this. If you print out nothing else, print out this little picture right here. Okay, this little picture is super important. It's also super important for you to have the right angles being as close to being right angles as possible. Okay, so if you need to trace your screen or you need to somehow make sure that you have a right triangle, the other thing you could do would be take a piece of paper 
cut your piece of paper, cut off a corner of it, and then drop down a nice straight line that comes from that corner so that you have right angles so that you can see what's happening with this. All right, so if you're back from pausing the video and drawing the picture, that's great because we're going to do quite a lot of things. There are three, th three, um, three things that we need to pay attention to here. On this picture, there's actually three geometric means. So I'm going to show you a template as far as how this works. The first geometric mean is the one that is the altitude, the one that comes from the right angle, right angle of the big triangle and comes down here. This is a geometric mean. It's the geometric mean of the two pieces that were created when the, when the altitude came down and hit the hypotenuse of the big triangle. So this right here is the geometric mean of B and C. And here is the little template that I have for that. A is the geometric mean of B and C. This is good for if you need to find A or B or C if you're given the other two. The other geometric means are hiding on the legs of the big triangle. D is a geometric mean of F and B. And I know that sounds strange, but because of the way the proportional triangles work, this turns out to be a geometric mean of B and F, F being the whole distance all the way across from A to C. And then the other leg is also a geometric mean. E is a geometric mean of C and F. E is a geometric mean of C and F. You might want to keep this section and go back to it as we go through these examples or after or before or somehow whenever you start getting a little fuzzy. This picture needs to be right in front of you when we do these examples so you can see it. Okay, here we go. Let's do examples. Okay, so for each of the following problems, find x. Okay, well, here we have a right triangle and here's the altitude. This one fits the first scenario. Okay, you have an altitude. It's the geometric mean of the two pieces. Here's your altitude. It's the geometric mean of 4 and 16. Wait, what does that look like? What does that mean? That means this. X is the geometric mean of 4 and 16. This one is the, the double. Then you can multiply, cross multiply. 4 times 16 is 64 equals x squared. So square rooting it, x equals 8. So our answer, x equals 8. In this picture, 7 is the one in the geometric mean spot. 7 is the geometric mean of x and 16. So first thing you look at when you have a picture like this where you can see you have an altitude, in other words, a right angle here and a right angle here, you look to find out what is in the geometric mean spot. Put that into the two matching spots. So 7 is now the geometric mean. And x and 16 go in the other two spots. This one's actually easier to solve because the geometric mean was given. We have 49 equals 16 x and divide both sides by 16. And that's it. That's your answer is 49 sixteenths. So you want to identify in a picture like this, identify the geometric mean and then do the problem. Now, believe it or not, that's basically the whole rest of the lesson, but please stay with me. Look at, pay attention to every example. 
because these are ones that once you get the hang of it, you're good. But if you don't put in the time, you're not going to get it. All right, here we go. We want to find X. This fits the scenario where we have a leg being a geometric mean. The leg is the geometric mean of the entire hypotenuse of the big triangle and the piece on the hypotenuse that's closest to it. So right back to here. X is going to be the geometric mean of 4 and the whole distance across here. So be careful. 4 is just given to you, but it's not the geometric mean of 4 and 8. That would be this one here. X is the geometric mean of 4 and 12. X is the geometric mean of 4 and 12. So what you need to do is you need to set it up like this. Put your geometric mean in first, then put in the other numbers that are applicable. We're going to cross multiply. In order to solve this, I need to take the square root of 48. So let's break 48 down because it's not a perfect square. 4 times 12. 2 and 2, 3 and 4. But the 4 breaks down even further. We're looking for pairs. We have one pair of twos, two pairs of twos. So since we have one pair of twos, that brings out a two. Another pair of twos brings out the other two. And so it leaves us with four times the square root of three. That's our x value. All right. So do watch out. Notice that I'm not even using the calculator really at all. I'm using it um, very minimally. And I do want you to be able to write them in terms of square roots for your answers. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, let's think this through. Always check here. This one's not here, so we're not looking at this geometric mean. We're on the outside, so we have an outside geometric mean on the leg. It's the geometric mean of the close one and the whole hypotenuse. So on this problem, geometric mean goes in the the matching spots, x and 16 in the other. Cross multiply. 12 times 12, 144. Then divide by 16. And so that one, x is 9. Okay. Some of them are easier, some of them are harder. We've got a couple trickies coming up. Okay. All right, here we go. We do have this geometric mean. Here's our geometric mean. It's the geometric mean of this piece and this piece. We have to do a little calculating to get this piece, though. We know the 3. But in order to get here, you have to do 18 minus 3 to get your 15. Because x is the geometric mean of this one and this one. So x is in your matching spots. Then cross multiply. It's not a perfect square, so we would factor it. That's 3 times 3 times 5. 3 times 3 times 5. A pair of 3's brings a 3 out. And 3 times the square root of 5. One more. Here's our geometric mean. Now this one, okay, so this one, if you have not yet had Algebra 2, okay, then this one won't 100% make sense to you, okay? I am keeping it in because those who have had Algebra 2 need to be able to see this and say, oh yeah, there's that. Those of you that have had Algebra 1, you probably touched on this a little bit, okay, but didn't get very far on it. So I'm, I'm leaving this in for you to see and keep it in your mind that this is my window into Algebra 2, but don't tune out yet because this would make an excellent bonus. And I think that maybe um, even if you didn't have Algebra 2, I'm expecting that some of you can handle it. So let's take a look here. Okay, so we have our 10 there. And 10 is our geometric mean of x and this whole distance. 
Okay. Now the thing is that this whole distance is not just 15. This whole distance is x plus 15. So we have here 10 is the geometric mean of x and x plus 15. Okay, so far so good. Everybody could do this step. Absolutely everybody. Cross multiply. Everybody can write this out. x times x plus 15 equals 100, 10 times 10. I'm trying to get x by itself. Here's the, the tricky part, but you can do it. x times x is x squared plus 15x equals 100. I can then subtract 100 from both sides. Now here's the part that gets interesting. For those of you that remember factoring, for those of you that remember factoring, you're looking for numbers that when you multiply them together give you negative 100, but when you add those two numbers together you get 15. Because we need to factor this. So numbers that when you multiply them together give you negative 100, and when you add them together you get 15. So when I think about that, I know that 5 times 20 equals 100. Negative 5 times 20 gives me negative 100. And when I add them, I get 15. So my factored form is x plus 20 times x minus 5. Like I said, I know that it was kind of maybe the end of the year or maybe some of you have more or less experience in factoring than others. But then since you have things that are multiplied together that give you zero, each one of these would give you an answer. x equals negative 20 or x equals 5. Now here's the thing with this. These are lengths, so this negative 20 really doesn't make any sense, okay? x equals 5 has to be the answer simply because you can't have negative 20 as a length, okay? All this math was done right, but you can't have negative 20 as a length, so x equals 5. So that's a great place to stop, okay? now. Tomorrow is uh, a day that people are supposed to get their feet under them. So tomorrow you are taking a break. Um, your assignment number 60 is going to be due at the end of the period tomorrow. So you're going to have a work day. No additional video tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow. No additional video on um, thurs Thursday. Thursday is a work day, so you're going to be able to spend all of your time working on assignment 60 and doing a good job with that. And then on um, Friday, we'll have a new topic. And, oh, no, actually, no. Friday, we're going to be reviewing for a quiz. Sorry about that. I've revised my plan so many times. Friday will be a quiz review so that on Monday, we can have uh, a quiz on sections one to three. So please make sure that you are paying attention, staying up with that. And I am praying for you guys. I love you. I miss you. And I'm just going to say God bless.